So, we can look at uh, problem number 1 in compressible flow which is uh, CF 1. So, what is given here is that there is a sound wave front across which the pressure rise is uh, 30 Pascal and this uh, sound wave front moves into stationary air which is at temperature 300 Kelvin and pressure of 101 kilo Pascal and you have to calculate the or estimate the velocity induced in air and uh, the temperature change across this wave. So, let me just draw a very simple sketch to show what is given. So, we have this uh, sound wave front which is moving with the speed A. The pressure is 101 Pascal kilo Pascal rather ahead of the wave and the temperature is uh, 300 Kelvin again ahead of the wave and across the wave delta P is given as 30 Pascal. So, there is a small increase in pressure uh, as we have seen earlier in the lecture. Um, delta P that is given equal to 30 Pascal and what we have to find out is what is the velocity that is induced here. So, velocity induced and also the uh, temperature change across the wave. These are the two things that are required to be found. So, one way of doing this is uh, as follows. So, A the speed of this sound wave can be found out using square root of gamma r t which is uh, square root of uh, 1.4 r for air is 287 and the temperature is given as 300 and Kelvin, 300 Kelvin rather. So, once this is uh, uh, known you can find out the speed with which uh, this sound wave is moving. So, that is that is first part and uh, if you recall we had a squared equal to delta p divided by delta rho. Okay. So, this was our um, expression that we had obtained earlier. Now, this delta p is given as 30 Pascal and this a square is something that we can find as above and therefore, the first thing that you can determine is change in the density delta rho that is um, the first thing that you can do and then use the mass balance equation which will give you delta V equal to A times delta rho divided by rho and this rho is to be calculated as P over R t and that pressure is 101 kilo Pascal R is again 287 and P is 300. So, this is the density rho uh, of the air into which this sound wave is moving. Okay. So, this is um, and now you have everything uh, delta rho is calculated up here, uh, rho is calculated using our ideal equation gas equation and uh, the speed of sound is also calculated directly using the expression square root of gamma r t right here and therefore, this will give you the velocity that is induced in air behind the sound wave. So, now the way to, to interpret this is the following that um, we have this sound wave which is moving with the speed of a here it is zero velocity stagnant air and behind 
is what we induce this velocity given by delta v. So that's uh, that's first part. The second part is uh, to calculate. the change in the temperature delta t across the wave so one way of doing this is um, you can use the energy equation which was the change in the enthalpy um, equal to a times the velocity induced and this is simply C p multiplied by delta t equal to A times delta v. So, if you know the specific heat of air um, you are done because both the speed of the, the wave and the velocity induced have all already been calculated. Um, this is one way of calculating it else you can use p equal to constant times rho raise to gamma um, between 1 and 2 where one is the condition ahead of the wave and two is the condition behind the wave. So, P 1 here is um, 1 over 1 kilo Pascal, P 2 is given as 1 over 1 k P A plus 30 Pascal. Okay. Density you can calculate here using which you can calculate the density here and then once you have the calculated density here you can calculate using these two values the temperature here and knowing the temperature T 1 you can find out uh, delta T equal to T 2 minus T 1. The reason I am pointing out this uh, another way of doing this calculation is because if you perform it these uh, in, in these two different manners you will see that there is a slight difference in the, the values that you obtain and um, I would like actually for you to think about why this uh, little bit difference should exist between the calculations done in one manner and uh, done in some other manner. So, please think about uh, what could be the reason and we can discuss this or discuss that also in, in, a, in a later session if you want. So, this was the first problem. Um, I told in the lecture that you can uh, uh, solve up to problem C, CF 0.7 uh, with the material that we have covered today in the, in the lecture. So, let me go directly to CF 7. So, there are two, two parts to this problem again. So, here we are dealing with a shock wave across which the pressure ratio is 1.15. So, we have a shock wave. with P 2 over P 1 equal to 1.15 and it moves down the duct into still air uh, which is at a pressure of 50 kilo Pascal and 300 Kelvin. So, what we have is the shock wave moving. Now, let me use the, the symbol C for the uh, speed of the shock, uh, it is not a sound wave remember and uh, P 1 here is given as 50 kilo Pascal, T 1 is 300 Kelvin okay. and P 2 over P 1 is given directly 1.15. So, P 2 is simply 50 multiplied by 1.15. kilo Pascal and here the velocity is 0 ahead of the wave. What, what you are asked to find is the temperature 
and velocity behind the shock wave. So, T 2 and velocity behind the shock wave. So, the first part is pretty straightforward um, of the calculation of temperature. You can use the Rankine Eugonio relation, which is basically a ratio of T2 over T1 as a function of um, P2 over P1 and gamma and the shock pressure ratio or the shock strength P 2 over P 1 is given as 1.15 and this gamma is um, for air 1.4. So, using this you can directly obtain this ratio T 2 over T 1 and the uh, once you know the ratio T 2 over T 1 since T 1 is provided you will get temperature T 2. So, this will provide you uh, T 2 since T 1 is given. So, that that was uh, that was it. For the for the second part what you can do is let me redraw this picture. So, we have uh, the, the shock moving with the speed c we have P 1 T 1 V equal to 0, P 2 T 2. Let me write it only this much right now. So, this picture is drawn in a lab coordinate system. What we mean by this is that we are basically sitting in this lab coordinate system and we are watching the shock wave move past us with a speed of c in still or stagnant air which is at conditions p 1 and t 1. So, usually what can be done to solve these problems is to analyze these, these kinds of situations from a shock coordinate system as what we had done in the analysis uh, in, the, in the lecture which basically means that we want to make the shock steady, attach the coordinate system to the shock and from that coordinate system which is attached to the shock perform the analysis. So, to do that instead of this what we have is you basically add a component C in the opposite direction to everywhere, then what will happen is this shock becomes steady. And let there be some velocity v 2 earlier, which now you can call as um, c minus v 2. Okay this is the way you can analyze the problem. And now, since all conditions are given, it is also given that the, the pressure ratio is uh, 1.15, which means that the P 2 and T 2 values can be found. Once you analyze it in this fashion, you can, um, you can determine what is the velocity V 2 behind the shock. One other way of doing this is use the shock tables which, which have been provided to you. So, what can be done is that using the shock pressure ratio which is P 2 over P 1, you can read out what Mach number this P 2 over P 1 um, corresponds to. And this will require most likely some interpolation with 
within your uh, shock tables, which is exactly similar as what you would do for example, if you are using uh, the steam tables. So, the interpolation process is exactly the same and once you have determined what is the upstream Mach number. Now, remember this upstream Mach number is with respect to the shock. Okay. So, once you have determined the upstream Mach number with respect to the shock, here is what we have. This is M 1, P 1, T 1 with P 1 and T 1 known you can also calculate rho 1 if you want. And once you know this M 1 using the normal shock tables, you can immediately find out M 2. So, this is with uh, the shock tables. P 2 is anyway given to you, T 2 is something that you found from part 1 of this problem, rho 2 is something that you can obviously find out once you know P 2 and T 2. Once you know all these quantities, you can find out V 2 which is the velocity of the flow post shock or behind the shock, but with respect to the shock. Okay. So, with respect to the shock we will see this uh, velocity v 2. Here is what we have uh, v 1 which is with respect to the shock. So, now once you have found the velocity with respect to the shock, what you can do is you can remove this coordinate system from, uh, from where it is attached to the shock and make it again the lab coordinate system. So, revert to the lab coordinate system and in, in doing so, what you are basically doing is you are adding uh, a component of C which is the, the speed of the, the shock into each of these velocity components to the right. So, what is this C? M 1 is simply V 1 divided by A 1 and C is simply m 1 times a 1 which is essentially the velocity v 1. So, using this then you can calculate In part 2, what is given is that this shock is not really moving in still air, but it is moving in air which has a bulk velocity of 100 meters per second, which is um, toward the shock. The pressure ratio is still given as 1.15. Again, in this case, what you can do is you can analyze the problem from the shock coordinate system. And so, what we have here is the shock to which the coordinate system is attached and what we will have is then 100 meters per second plus the speed of the, the shock itself and C minus the V induced P 1, T 1 which will give you rho 1 and P 2 equal to um, 1.15 times P 1 as the pressure increase across the shock. T 2 is again exactly calculated in the same manner as what you did earlier using the rankine yugonio relations. And using this set, then you can calculate um, V induced. So, the, the bottom line or one of the most important tip that you can utilize is that 
um, usually analyze the problem in a shock coordinate system which simply means that the, the shock is made stationary. Or you can use the normal shock tables in which case the entire problem can be solved in terms of an upstream Mach number M1 with respect to the shock. Um, with, uh, with this, the remaining problems between uh, CF1 and CF7, that is the CF2 to CF6, uh, you can try to solve. The only uh, sort of, uh, let us say, involved problem amongst C CF2 to CF6 is probably CF2, which involves uh, determining the speed of sound for a gas that obeys the Van der Waals uh, equation of state. And the important part in that first, uh, so in that second problem is the very first part, which is requiring that you have to show that the dp d rho uh, or partial derivative of pressure with respect to density at constant entropy is equal to gamma times partial derivative of pressure with respect to density at constant temperature. So, if you are able to show that using the thermodynamic property relations that you have gone through last week, uh, the second part then simply involves using the Van der Waals uh, equation of state to calculate this uh, dp d rho at constant temperature and simply multiplying that by gamma to obtain the uh, speed of sound for a gas which uh, obeys the Van der Waals equation. So, I think CF2 is something that I suppose uh, will take a little bit of effort, but uh, CF3 to CF6 should be fairly straightforward once uh, you go through what we have just discussed in the first um, problem and the seventh problem. Thank you.